Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Now this is not actually a do-it-yourself video. It's just a video detailing uh, how we made a 2 by 72 inch knife making belt sander uh, basically from scrap components at my friend's metalworking shop. Now this is the finished uh, belt sander and really the only components on this belt sander that I actually uh, had to go out and buy uh, were the aluminum wheels um, and I got those uh, on eBay. Uh, the motor uh, my friend had in his shop and kind of donated to the project. I did have to buy the springs which I got at Lowe's and um, there's some, some hardware, uh, the 5 8 uh, studs, or I'm sorry, the half inch studs uh, for mounting the wheels. Everything else we made from uh, scrap material um, and some steel which he had on his shelves. Now it's a very uh, simple design, uh, similar to many belt sanders, do it yourself and homemade belt sanders that are out there. I did make a couple of minor, um, co not corrections, but uh, improvements uh, or what I thought were improvements and I'll, I'll detail those in a minute. This is the, uh, the wobble bearing uh, or the, the tension arm adjustment um, and that allows you to adjust that belt to the left or to the right uh, just with a with a screw we basically took a half inch piece of steel uh, drilled and tapped a hole in it for uh, the stud and the uh, aluminum wheel and then drilled and tapped um, through the side of that steel uh, for little shoulder bolts uh, that that it pivots on and it just creates our own uh, fairly easy to make little wobble bearing We started out with a Baldor uh, motor. It's a uh, one horsepower, um, and you know I, I read a lot about these things before I built them. A lot of people are, are using uh, one and a half or two horsepower motors. Um, I was very surprised and very happy with the end results. Even with this one horsepower, this thing has a lot. Um, you know, you can really lean into it, and it won't stop the belt. Um, I also made two mounts for the table. Um, you know, an upper mount and a lower mount. Um, one of those is going to be for the uh, hollow grind mount, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. The um, platen was made out of uh, two inch angle iron. This is an additional platen that I made for the hollow grind. It's just a curved piece of steel. I take off the original platen and put this on. Um, I've never seen anybody do it this way before. Most people go out and buy big wheels. Uh, but the end results actually worked out really nice um, and I'm going to show that on a, on a separate video. This is actually the first hollow grind uh, that I've ever done um, and that was done with that curved platen. So kind of a proof of concept. Uh, this is the Baldor uh, 1 horsepower, I think it was 3600 uh, RPM uh, motor um, and that was the starting point. Um, we then took uh, channel iron um, and cut this, you know, basic length, um, and I'm going to drill holes in order to mount the motor right in onto that. That'll be the, the top of the table. I then used cardboard templates um, to mount the vertical wall or to design the vertical wall, and we're going to lay those out on 3 8 uh, steel, and I basically cut those out just with an angle uh, grinder or disc grinder. The uh, hole and the location of the, um, the tapped holes into the motor I did on the cardboard first. It was a four and a half inch hole. I think that's pretty standard. Um, one of uh, Jason's guys, Anthony, cut that out with a torch for me. And then I just used a grinder to smooth out uh, all of those edges. And then I, um, I drilled the corresponding holes and I was able to mount that Baldor motor uh, directly to that vertical plate. Um, and then also bolt it to um, the table or the channel iron. And that was the base. Uh, those two pieces eventually got welded together. And then we built on that. We welded on an additional arm for the height. I had, before I started, bought a couple of uh, 2 by 72 inch belts uh, just so that when we laid this thing out, we knew the proper size. Didn't have plans going into it. Um, you, we used some square tubing. Um, you know, one size fits into the other. It really doesn't matter what size is as long as um, one tube fits into the other. I did use two bolts on each tubing so that uh, they were really firmly held against uh, each other. 
I did have to buy the studs, um, as I mentioned before. Those I got from uh, McMaster and Carr. Um, and here you, you can see that the, the platen arm is in place and also the tensioning arm is in place. So you're really starting to come together. This is the first time uh, we fired it up. Jason did some, some work on the electrical. Uh, this, this motor used to run in the opposite direction. He was able to swap out a few wires and uh, get it to run in the correct direction uh, for this particular setup. I'm very happy with how quiet, how smooth, uh, kind of vibration free. And also, you're able to, to lean into this a little bit. Really quite, a, quite a few sparks and remove quite a bit of material very easily. I think what's on there now is an 80 grit paper. Um, one of the last steps was just to build uh, the table, and that's very simple. We just took a piece of 3 8 uh, steel and welded it onto a piece of square tubing. So that'll slide into either one of those corresponding um, larger tubes to create a, a table. I went with a, a slightly larger table because I do use, I'm a beginner, and I do use a uh, bevel grinding um, jig, and I wanted that to be able to slide right on that table. This is just showing you the adjustment. I can move that belt from left to right and get it to line up perfectly with uh, either the left or the right hand side of that platen. And that's very important when doing plunge cuts. Now, the first time I'm trying this out, I'm, I'm trying it out on one of the water jet um, blanks that I had made up. Um, I'm gonna try it out on one of the smaller blanks first. You can see my uh, bevel jig and also my plunge uh, jig uh, in place there. The plunge jig basically just prevents that uh, sanding belt from going too far, in this case, to the left, or creating any marks too far to the left. And the bevel jig holds that piece of angle iron uh, at the correct angle so that when I'm grinding, it, it's very consistent. A lot of people freehand this stuff. Like I said, I'm a beginner. Um, I'm gonna use the jig. And I'm just going to slide it along that table. But this is my very first attempt at doing a bevel, a grind on the new sander. And like I said, a world of difference from the one inch uh, belt sander I used to have. Uh, swapping out the belts, very easy. You just you know, pull down on that tensioning arm, uh, take one belt off, slide the other one uh, back on, kind of get it lined up before you put the tension back on. Uh, notice that I'm leaving the knife blank in place, still clamped onto that bevel jig. Um, and now I can continue to grind, in this case with a 400 grit uh, sanding paper, without losing uh, the placement or the angle. Um, so that when you, when you go back to doing some more grinding, it's going to continue uh, right where you left off and smooth out all of the lines from the coarser grit um, sandpaper. So really, this is a, a basic 2x72 sander. Um, it's new to me. I've never used a 2x72 before. I was thrilled with its, uh, with its power and ability to move a large amount of material very quickly. Uh, the only modifications, really, that I did to this that make it kind of unique um, is that the number of bolts used for each square tubing to hold that, uh, that table firmly and, and not tilted, and then also that um, um, hollow grind uh, platen which I made and, and that one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to cover on a, on a separate video. Um, I did also try it out on a larger uh, blank. This one was also a water cut blank and this is a large cleaver probably ten and a half inches long so quite a bit of material to remove on this grind and you can see that, it, that this grinder makes quick work out of it. I just called it a grinder. A lot of people call them belt sanders. Um, I, I know a lot of people also call them grinders. Um, my friend Jason has corrected me numerous times. Um, it apparently should be only referred to as a belt sander. But a nice straight bevel cut, nice even bevel cut, and removed a lot of material very quickly. I highly re recommend 
um, a 2x72 uh, belt sander with at least a one horsepower motor for anybody that's planning on doing any type of, of knife making. I would also say that after spending all this time building this, it probably would have been easier to go out and buy one. I know you can buy a finished product for about $1,500. You can buy the majority of the hardware without the motor and the wheels for the $600 range. Uh, please consider it. Uh, by all means, check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.